Welcome VR fans to my latest video. In this one, we're gonna be doing something a little different. I'm gonna actually be taking a look at a piece of new tech. Well, new for me anyway, I've never used it before. I'm gonna be looking at the HTC Vive Focus 3 to see what it's all about, what it's capable of, and is it easy to develop for? So here it is. Here's the Vive Focus 3 in its box, all ready to rock and roll. Um, I was actually using this because we're actually doing a, a project at work that requires us to use this headset. Never used it before, and I don't really know too much about it. In the past, I've always just built for Oculus Quest or Oculus Rift, uh, so this is new territory. So I was excited to get my hands on it. I've actually been using it for a week or so, so I've got some initial thoughts, but let's just dive in and have a look at actually what this headset's capable of. So straight away, um, you can see that it's quite an expensive headset. I mean, this is a standalone headset, but it's considerably more expensive than the Quest. Meta have just increased the price of the Quest. But even so, this is still more expensive, at over £1,000. But is it worth it? Well, it includes a hand tracking. So you can see your hands in VR. It's got 5K resolution, nice and crisp, and up to 120 degrees field of view with a 90 hertz refresh rate and a little slider here, which I've actually found quite useful for adjusting the IPD, the interpupillary distance. Got some cooling, sucking in the cold air, spitting out the warm air, spatial audio, in and out of VR in seconds. So it's got a quite, it's got a very nice kind of adjustable strap. More of a modern look for their controllers, because I remember they looked like a bit like TV remotes before. Now they've gone very much like uh, the Quest in terms of design and shape and button layout. And this is what's particularly good about the Vive. So they do actually include like business stream streaming um, and some enterprise features as well, like uh, having, a, having a portal where you can upload like your builds to and then distribute them to your various headsets. So that bit is really useful and that's why it, it's kind of good for business. So some impressive stats on the Vive Focus 3, but is it easy to develop for? So on day one, I unpacked the Focus 3 and followed the instructions on the inside of the box to set it up and um, immediately kind of ran into problems with it wasn't recognizing the controllers. Uh, so I had to update the headset first for, and then run through the entire setup process again and then it detected the controllers. There wasn't a seamless setup process out of the box and that's not just for development, that's just for getting it ready to play on. And then it quickly dawned on me that I didn't really know how to kind of integrate it with Unity uh, and how well it's going to fit with their XR plugin management system. And I'll be honest, that took a lot of research and experimentation and a little bit of frustration. So what I think it's probably easier to do is actually go through the process that I went through in order to actually set Unity up so you can develop for the Vive Focus 3 and then also show you how I went about building it and putting it on the headset. And then as we go along that process, you'll be able to see kind of where I was struggling and then hopefully you won't have to. So the first thing I went to do instinctively was to set Unity up to work using the XR plugin management. And then once I installed all that, I thought I'll go ahead and use OpenXR. So I checked the OpenXR box, tick the box for the new input system, then once Unity had restarted, I checked OpenXR, clicked on the little yellow triangle and realized I needed to add at least one interaction profile. So I went down to OpenXR, then went to add an interaction profile. There was a HTC Vive controller profile, but that didn't quite work with the Focus 3 because it's a, a different kind of system. So after a lot of looking around on forums, I actually discovered that I need to bring in a package. So I went to Window Package Manager and I was looking for the, the OpenXR Wave plugin. So I went to the Unity, Unity registry and, and it wasn't on the list. There's nothing Vive related here. Uh, and then discovered on another forum, I actually needed to go to the project settings and under package manager, I needed to add a new scoped registry. I've never done that before, but in order to get access to the Wave package and the Vive stuff, I needed to put in some information here. So after a lot of kind of fumbling around the internet, trying to find out how to go about bringing in this Wave XR plugin into Unity. I then found learn how to add a Vive registry here and it basically gave me some information I needed to enter in order to get those packages. So under name I put Vive in capital letters and then the URL which I copied and pasted for 
from that site, which the link is in the description for, and then entered the same for the scape. Basically it looks like that. And then click save. I went back to the package manager uh, and then I looked at the top and went to my registries and this is now, now where I found the Vive plugins that I was looking for. Because the Focus 3 is an Android based system, I selected the Vive Wave OpenXR plugin for Android and went ahead and installed that. And then also I installed the Vive Wave XR plugin. I installed that too. Phew! And then once I'd done that, I went back to my OpenXR my XR plugin management settings and now you see in the list I had uh, Wave XR because it's an Android I went to my Android settings after that clicked on open XR just below and added an interaction profile and here I was able to add in the Vive Focus 3 controller interaction now and also add in the Vive Focus 3 support so once I felt like I had all that kind of set up here it's quite quick, but finding all that document, going all through all that documentation to find out how to integrate it uh, wasn't straightforward. Uh, I ended up spending about two or three hours just going through forums and the Vive development documentation, which to be honest, wasn't great. It didn't really lead you down any kind of specific path. It felt like it felt like kind of things and features were hidden. I had to really dig around for that kind of unity integration. I didn't just didn't come at, like stumble across it. I would have thought or expected there'd be some kind of link you could go to on the developers page it said like here's how you do it for unity um but i didn't find that i may have gone about it the hard way but there was no easy way that i saw so hopefully that that little section helps you in, in setting it up but then had to go about constructing a very simple scene then when i set up a scene i went ahead and removed the main camera we don't need that and we need some kind of vr setup so i went back to my old faithful XR interaction toolkit so went back to the plugin manager went back to unity registry and went add package by name and typed com.unity.xr.interaction.toolkit and installed that XR and installed the XR interaction toolkit package also then included the starter assets close that down went to my starter assets and then found my XR controllers and added them to the preset. So add XR and the same for the left. Went back to my project settings and then under presets, put my left for the left controller and the right for the right controller. And I was able to add in my VR camera. I go XR, XR origin action based. And it's gonna drop everything I need in there. So I've got my XR camera in the scene with the tracking mode set to floor. And let's make sure all my input actions are assigned on my controllers and here it was good to go. One last thing I just needed to add in the input action manager and under action assets click on a little circle and add in our input actions and then save the scene. So now was the time I was ready to plug in my headset and build to the device and that's when I ran into a couple more problems. So let's crack open the box, take out the headset, and I'll show you the issues I had getting it connected. Oh. Okay, we've got a headset here, noise, two controllers, all wrapped up in plastic. There we go, the right one, and the left one. And our headset here, take off the plastic. It looks really nice. It kind of reminds me of, of like fighter pilot goggles, but it feels really light. And that's when I realized that the battery was its own special little thing, which is, you know, a fair amount of weight and it adds on a bit to the headset. So we'll take that out. We're going to need that. And also you've got a box here for the controller to charge it, which attaches to the battery at the back of the headset for a little kind of adapter just in there and the coolest USB cable. USB-C which splits to go into the controllers and when I saw this I thought okay cool well maybe you know that's the cable we can use to like, plug in the headset to the computer. Boy was I wrong. Okay so I thought I could use this cable that came with it to uh, plug into my PC. This is actually for charging the controllers but it was the only cable in the box so I thought well much like the Quest you know the cable I can probably run in and just plug it in straight away. But I did that and nothing. This cable is only for the controllers there's no cable in the box that is going to allow you to connect the headset to the PC. So how do I 
build my unity builds well i looked online and it looks like you can you can get a cable and like an additional cable which is another oh, and this is really annoys me as well right so every time i pick up this the front magnetic cover always pops off so you get you you can buy an additional cable which plugs in there and goes to the pc and um, which will allow you to build but that is more money i don't want to spend that and also you know you're spending over a thousand dollars on this headset and um, at least you could get the cable that actually connects this to the pc but my good old trusty Meta Quest 2, its power cable, which runs to the, the, the plug from the headset, actually works with this as well. So luckily, I don't need to spend that money, but if you don't have one of these, an, an Oculus headsets lying around with this cable, um, then you're gonna be a bit stuck. But this cable will, will actually allow me to build. So I can plug it into my headset uh, and then it's detected in Unity but a few, a few steps that I need to go through on the headset, or one step rather, and that was that I needed to put it into developer mode. With my Focus 3 connected to the PC with my Quest cable, um, dear oh dear, I then had to put the Focus 3 into developer mode, and to do that I had to go through the settings, um, and there wasn't anything that was worded like developer mode, and I read online that there's areas where you had to click on like the version number seven times and stuff like that. And it took me ages to figure out that wasn't the case. And all you actually had to do was enable USB debugging in the settings. So it was actually quite straightforward. And then once I had done that, plugged it all in, went to file, build settings, and had to switch it to Android and then switch platform. And then when I switched and it recompiled everything, the Wave XR player settings config dialog box popped up and uh, was getting me to change a couple of things, which is really helpful actually. Very cool that that does that. So I went to accept all and I made the right choice, thank God. And went back to my build settings, uh, all the errors are gone. And all it's done is it's, changed, it's added the open GLS free graphics API there, still in linear color space. I unchecked my override default package name. I'm gonna keep it here so, you can just type in whatever you want and then let's go change it down there. So it's targeting the minimum API level is Android 7.1 and it's targeting Android 10 API level 29. Good stuff, I don't know what the hell that means. But regardless, I don't have any errors. So plugging in my headset again, I've turned it all on to make sure I haven't got any pop-ups in there about... Oh yeah, so it says choose USB mode in the headset. I'm just going to click on file transfer. This is a top option, file transfer. Don't know if that makes any difference. And then go to my run device and go to refresh. And you can see now it's connected and got my HTC Vive Focus 3. I'm gonna go and switch it to there. And then I'm gonna hit build and run and let's see what happens. And straight away we've got four errors. Let's take a look. Only ARM64 is supported to Android with OpenXR. Okay, so we go back to our player settings. Let's scroll down. We've got target architectures ARM B7. We need to uncheck that. Uh, ARM64 is grayed out. How do we get that on? Double. And let's look at another arrow. A second. Double click to fix OpenXR project validation issues. Okay. That. Ah, here we go. Only ARM64 is supported. Fix. Okay, but that should have fixed that one. Let's clear it and try again, build and run. Okay, so we've got, it says build completed. Let's have a quick check. A bit limited in my movements because I'm still connected by my cable. All right, I've got made with Unity. Hey, it's all working. Okay, so it looks like I've recording, hopefully I am. And you can see I'm moving about my scene uh, and all is okay. Um, my controller's being tracked and uh, I can see my 3D environment. So, excellent. Making progress, managed to build onto the device. I don't know if it's because if I'm recording or not, um, but there's a lot of tearing um, and frame rate issues. Um, so let's figure out if we stop recording a sec. I did see posts about other people having issues with performance. Um, and there was something I looked at to, in order to boost that a little bit. Went to my graphics and it was using the high fidelity render pipeline in, for the URP. I clicked on that, which then highlighted it in here and clicked in the inspector uh, and had a look at what it was actually using. 
The anti-aliasing was quite high. I, I just dropped that down to two just to see. Um, but the, the magic number for me was adjusting this render scale, um, which if you hover over, it says scales the camera render target, allowing the game to render a resolution different than the native resolution. So I dropped that down to 0.8 uh, and did actually see quite a significant increase in performance. And then you can also adjust some little settings down here. But that render scale was really the, the, the one thing that did it for me um, in order to make things run a little bit smoother. So what I did, I build that again. Okay, so instantly I can see now that moving my head around in the scene um, is, you yeah, I'm not getting that kind of tearing effect. Everything seems a lot more kind of stable. So I have a play around with that pipeline asset. And again, that render scale really kind of fixed it for me. I mean, at the moment it's using the high fidelity render pipeline asset, but you have got um, other ones as well you can choose from that are more performant, but definitely that render scale will fix a lot of things for me. So there we have it, the Focus 3. I'm going to be using it for a big project. Um, and it's just getting used to how it all works, I think, for me, and all its little quirks. On paper, it's a great bit of kit. It's very expensive, um, but I don't think anything's going to replace my Quest 2. I think uh, just for ease of development, um, it's so much more straightforward and as a wider audience as well at the moment. But this is still very cool. I mean, it, it looks premium when you, you know when you compare it to the quest it's got some nice it's got a nice leather cover on the front the head support at the back's cool i like the adjustable strap it's kind of annoying how every time i pick it up this falls out um but i'll get used to that i just won't grab it like a neanderthal and i like the uh the ipd slider on the bottom as well that's quite handy rather than just having um like a fixed values such as the quest so i'm getting used to it uh, hopefully you found this video useful and it's going to, if you are looking into getting um, a focus free or struggling with development, I hope it's helped you in some way. Later on this week, I'm going to be releasing another shader video, so stay tuned for that. If you've liked what you've seen, a subscription would really help me out and the channel as well. But until next time, see you later.